Hi, I'm James, and in this video I am taking a very quick look at this, which is the Acer Aspire 5 A514 53 laptop. This is a 14-inch laptop with the 10th gen Core i3 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD, which I got from Curry's for under £400 uh, from their eBay store. Now, um, this is quite a nice machine at this price point. Obviously, where we are in 2021 at the moment, finding um, you know, lower cost laptops is not particularly easy. The four gigabytes of RAM is a little bit disappointing, but other features of this machine kind of make up for that. The first of all is we have a, a IPS screen, and I am quite impressed with just the uh, general presentation of the machine with and that panel. Um, we have you know, reasonable brightness levels. It is not the brightest panel, but it is an IPS display. So it looks just pretty good. Um, at this price point, a lot of what you see is a TM panel at the moment. And this is actually really quite reasonable. Um, it also has Wi-Fi 6 uh, with an Intel AX201 card. Again, something that's unusual. Most uh, devices at this price point are 802.11ac, so seeing a Wi-Fi 6 based card is very nice. Looking around the machine itself, and the lid is aluminium, but the rest of the laptop is plastic. Looking down either side, we have power, Ethernet port, which again is unusual on what is a relatively thin, slim and small machine. An HDMI port, two USB-A ports and a USB-C. On the other side we have a USB-A 2.0 port, Kensington lock and headphone jack. The touchpad is reasonable size for the size of the machine. It would perhaps be nice to see the keyboard shifted a little higher in the chassis. Keyboard layout is good. Uh, this is obviously a UK English laptop, and unlike some of the HPs I've seen, uh, it has you know your your proper uh, split shift key here, and they've done things to accommodate the UK layout with a proper enter key and so on. Um, also, one thing that did really impress me is this fingerprint sensor. Um, the speed and accuracy of it is just, um, compared to the Dell that I am using as my general machine, um, I've trained it with two fingers and it just, you know, pretty much every time just a light tap just goes straight in. Um, I really quite like having a fingerprint sensor on my machines. And while I bought this to sell, I am seriously considering replacing my current work machine with it. Um, just because it's it's really quite nice just from that aspect. It's a nice size. The Ethernet port for my work is very useful. And that fingerprint sensor and everything else is really good. Looking at other aspects, the memory on it, again, 4 gigabytes, as I say, only single channel and only DDR4-2666, not 3200, which is supported, I believe, by this processor. That's a bit disappointing. The battery is fairly large, uh, coming in at uh, sort of 5200 uh, milliwatt hours. Um, I haven't tested battery life, but it should be fairly good on this, particularly if you turn down brightness and so on. The SSD is a WD uh, SN520 drive, which I believe is a PCI Express uh, 3 drive. Only two lanes, not four, but for you know an i3, four gigs of RAM, that's not really a big issue. RAM is upgradable. The four gigabytes is soldered down, but you can increase that to um, you know eight. 12 gigs, even 20 if you add a 4, 8 or 16 gig DIMM module and I have a video showing how to do that. The SSD is also upgradable uh, with another M2 2280 drive and Acer even include a cable and bracket for fitting a 2.5 inch drive, be that mechanical hard drive or SSD. 
um, which isn't something I believe I've seen in another 14 inch laptop that I have looked at. One thing that is disappointing however is if we reach over we have our USB-C hub here and when we plug that in we will get a notice on the screen or we should and here this says display connection might be limited make sure your display the display port device that you're connecting is supported by your PC that is because this uh, USB-C port does not support display port what it also doesn't support again reaching over and fetching our USB PD plugging this in and connecting it and we do not receive any charge so despite it being a USB-C port here it does not do display port it does not do charging so you can break it out to a other USB ports Ethernet or not that you need to and so on but it does not support those two really interesting features of USB-C which limits how useful that port is it just becomes a less convenient USB port for all intents and purposes uh, the battery life here is predicting, as we can see, about seven, seven and a half hours. Um, obviously, how you depend, how you use the machine, that will vary, but that should be quite good life. And particularly given the price point of this machine, it's really hard to complain at that. The operating system it ships with is Windows 10 Home S, but of course you can unlock that to run standard applications, as I've done. As you can see, I'm running. HW monitor and CPU Z on this without issue. Um, fan noise does seem to ramp up as you use it, um, you know, for more CPU intensive or graphically intensive tasks. And that i3 and the G1 graphics are not going to make this a performance powerhouse. But for the price point and what is available in the UK currently, I've been very impressed by this. Like I say, I'm even considering switching out my old ASUS UX 305 CA and using this as my work machine because at this price point it is a really nice bit of kit. I really like some of the features. I hope you found this video interesting and do ask any questions you may have in the comments below. Uh, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as I post them and thanks for watching.